Well, good afternoon, everyone around the world here from the 18th annual CMAS Underwater Hockey World Championships. It's game day. The finals coming up shortly. Uh, we have uh, uh, here in Eager Hungary uh, the anticipated matches, and it's going to be just an electrifying segment. So we're just going to uh, turn it over now, going courtside to our uh, reporter on the scene, Adrian Battersby, uh, with one of the uh, coaches. And here he is, Adrian, take it away. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, with me, I've got the GB coach. Uh, tell us your name, where you're from? I'm Jacqueline Heineck, I'm from the Netherlands, and I coach the GB Ladies Elite. GB Ladies Elite, uh, that's a pretty good coaching job to have. The GB girls have looked very good all week. Uh, you just tell me how the week's gone from your point of view. Oh, I think we've uh, had a really good uh, go so far. It's obviously still about improving every game, and uh, I hope the girls bring it out all on the floor today. Yeah. Um, you only conceded a few goals in the round robins. You won very heavily to nil in the quarterfinal. And then suddenly against Australia, you were behind. First time in the tournament you've been behind. You know, did, did that give you a little feeling of nervousness that suddenly here's a team that's challenging you? Yeah, obviously, it's not what, what you want. You, uh, you hope you go as, uh, as easy as in the other games. On the other hand, uh, when we got the goal against, we really picked it up. So from a coaching perspective, I was quite happy with it and it made us really push ourselves. Uh, that's something we need today as well, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, just thinking about that semi-final match, we talked about it just a minute ago. That third goal, I think, was as good as any goal I've seen underwater. It was absolute poetry in motion. From a coach's point of view, I'm sure you watched the DVD last night and watched the action. How beautiful was that manoeuvre and how much work does that take to get the girls doing those sort of manoeuvres? Yeah, I think um, it's... Like on those moments where you play a semi-final against Australia and you're 2-1 uh, down, it's, uh, it's about getting that other goal in at 2-2 and then I think uh, the girls um, yeah, gave the punch to the Australians at the 3-2 uh, game and it was the turning point of the game. And uh, yeah, obviously it's, uh, it's, it's like parts of it are studied, but uh, yeah, it has to come together in the game and it did yeah. for us. Yeah. Now, here you are, a world final, GB looking to retain their world championship. Um, what are your thoughts about the New Zealand team? They're also unbeaten here this week. Yeah, they've, they've looked really uh, solid as a team. They've, they've shown some great uh, work on the walls, but also in the middle of the field. And um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Finals sort of have their own rules, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, you can let us into a little secret. You've only got the whole world of underwater hockey watching and maybe everybody else later on on, on replays. Have you done a little bit of homework in, against New Zealand here? Watch their qu semis and quarters? Obviously, we have been watching all the games and it's really good to watch from these stands as well because they're really high up so you can watch into the water. But I'm sure they've done the same thing for us and uh, these girls have played them a few finals now so uh, they know each other. Yeah. They know each other. And, um, and, and in a way, I suppose you must be quite happy that they had a tough match as well as you in the semi. So both teams, you know, do you feel there's any tiredness in the girls or do you feel that they're recovering day upon day? Uh, these girls uh, have trained so hard. They're uh, ready for a game a day. That's not a problem. It's, uh, it's more a mental question uh, on how ready are you and how much you want it. Yeah. So. Are you confident? I'm confident, yeah. Well, good luck and good luck in the final. Thanks for talking to Thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. All right, thanks for that, Adrian. And uh, we're going to be uh, bringing to you live the matches coming up shortly here at the Elite Finals. It's uh, going to be one heck of a match with the, the best teams in the world. We've got people from around the world tuning in with us. It's going to be an exciting match. So stay tuned here to 24-7 for live action coming up shortly with the Elite Finals here from the uh, 18th Annual CMAS Underwater Hockey World Championships. We'll be right back with you. OK, here I've got Andrew Carr, the uh, coach for the New Zealand team. And uh, Andrew, you must be pretty confident going into this match. The girls undefeated all the way through the week. We're anxious. Um, 
confidence? No, we just hope to perform well. But these sort of games, finals, like a rugby or a football World Cup, it's not really the best hockey we're going to see. It's going to be nitty gritty stuff and both teams just be sweating it out. So confident, hopeful. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, you started off the week brilliantly, just as GB did, didn't concede many goals in the round robin play. And then in your quarterfinal, very comfortable victory. And then the semi final came. Tell us a little bit about that match yesterday 5 4. Uh, well, there were a few contentious calls refereeing wise, um, we weren't happy about. Um, but as I mentioned a moment ago, it's, it's finals hockey, and you're not going to see sparkling champagne sport here today. It's, yeah. That's the pity of it. The best hockey is we will have seen in a round robin. Um, and it depends who you play against. N not all the teams here have a, a realistic structure to their play, so you don't actually see underwater hockey played. Often it's just yeah. thuggery on the walls. I mean, the men's, <laughs> the men's final later, it'll just be pure brutality. Yeah. Hopefully the women you know, will have a wee bit more um, silky skill to it, but let's not rely on it. I love your realistic approach. It's going to just be a fight in the water. Maybe a bit of hockey will break out now and then, but generally it's going to be a hard scuffle. Do you think that's going to be like that with the girls? You know, there's, tw yeah. there's a... 20 physical girls, really fit, really athletic, and it's gonna, it is going to be a bit of a fight in the middle of a pitch. Yeah, now and again you might see a, a good pass might go, or someone might be a half second too late, a half a second too soon, and someone will, will race off and, and get a runaway goal, and the crowd will go berserk. Um, but otherwise here it's just going to be pretty dogged stuff and yeah. lots of lots of refereeing calls, which, uh, hope, <laughs> well, hopefully not. Well. You've up, you must have done some work on the GB and seen like the GB team. And you know, I know the GB g girls, uh, the coach has been looking at the way you play. You know, do you look? <laughs> you raise your eyebrows. Maybe there's maybe there's a trick you missed here. But you know, have you? I presume you've been looking at a couple of the GB matches and just seeing what they're doing underwater. I had a bit of a sneak look for about 30 seconds during our quarterfinal game once we had that under control, and we watched um, the semi between Australia and GB yesterday, and that's all we've looked at. Not, we've seen them in previous World Champs and. We're reasonably confident we know what to expect, and hopefully we can impose our game plan on the yeah. on the situation and it and what they're trying to do isn't really won't be an issue for us. Okay. Just finally, from a general New Zealand perspective, I know you've got to get back to your team yeah. for the Kiwis. We're fine you've got one. you've got six out of the eight finals. What have you been doing down there? Well, we didn't send two to the other two. Really? We only sent six teams. Hundred percent success rate. Looking good, uh, but of course you've got to win the finals as well. Yeah, we've won three out of four so far. It's just us and the guys to finish it off. Um, no, we just have a, a good development program for our youngsters. Most of the people in the sport in New Zealand are probably under the age of 18 or 20. Um, they're all at high school. So we've got, got the numbers there. So we've got quite a, um, a base to, yeah. to, to select from. Well, assuming they all stick with it. But, you know, what kids are like, they finish school, they get a job or a car and, yeah. and start to drink and it's all over. <laughs> Well, I love your laid-back attitude, Andrew, and good luck in this final. It's going to be a great match. Looking forward to it. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for the opportunity. Much. Thank See you. Guys.
Well, here we are as we are uh, awaiting the start of this match. Uh, I think we're, uh, they're going to be putting the teams up shortly. We're still a little while to go. There's still 12 minutes to go on the countdown clock. Fascinating interviews there. And uh, I know Daryl uh, wouldn't have been able to hear them up in the desk here. He doesn't have any headphones on, but the, the, the attitude of uh, the two different coaches was quite amazing. The, the British coach was very uh, professional, uh, very focused. She'd done a lot of homework on the opposing team. And the New Zealand coach said, well, I took 30 seconds of them and just watched a little bit here and there, but I'm not really, you know. And, and his attitude was, it's going to just be a fight underwater. There's 20 fit athletes who are extremely fit. They're just going to have a big, fa massive fist fight, and a bit of hockey's going to break out from here and there. Like, you know, you've been involved in matches like this, and you know, you've, you've been watching a lot of them. Is that pretty much how you find that the elite finals can go sometimes? It, it depends on the the teams, but you have to remember these two teams have been uh, at the world champion level many times before. Uh, uh, in fact, in 2011, uh, GB uh, had actually won the world championships in Portugal. Uh, New Zealand again is has been a dominant force for many years uh, in many different divisions here at the World Championships. So um, we expect to see, uh, I think, some really fast-paced hockey here. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see the two different types of strategies. Uh, the British have a new coach this year for their uh, women's elite team, uh, as well as uh, the New Zealand team. So um, it'll be interesting to see how their formations and their strategies uh, come out through the comp and uh, we'll let him play some hockey and just kind of go from there. Well, this is Great Britain versus New Zealand. It's the women's final for the World Championship. Great Britain, the defending champions and undefeated up against New Zealand who were also undefeated here. In fact, uh, some interesting stats. You know that I like looking up the stats, Darrell. Uh, basically, the stats... Coming into the, the round dropping group, Great Britain only conceded three goals in their first seven matches. They scored nil in the quarterfinals, and then, of course, uh, it was a 4 2 semi final win. Looking at the uh, New Zealand side, only conceded two in the seven, didn't, didn't uh, concede a goal in their quarterfinal, but then they had an incredible 5 4 win over South Africa. So both teams have had tough semi finals. Uh, Great Britain were 2 1 behind to the Australians, and I don't know if you saw it, Daryl, but uh, there was one of the goals of, of the tournament that Great Britain scored. And uh, I talked to uh, Jacqueline about it, and she, she just said it was lovely to see it all come together. But it was an absolutely beautiful flowing move down the left hand side, flicked it inside to a GB supporter, who then immediately flicked it further inside, and she had the pace to put it straight on goal. And the Aussies just couldn't live with that move. Yeah, it's quite uh, incredible to see some of these players do that. They'll be going all the way at full speed down the court um, on one direction. They'll pull a little quick move. They'll pull back, shoot it across one player, and then at the same time, as soon as that player gets it, they immediately shoot across to the far player on the outside, and the, the game changes direction so quickly, and that's how they're able to do that. Uh, also, one other interesting point here. Um, these two teams are, are uh, uh, rivals, if you will, from the last World Championships. Um, the uh, Great Britain and New Zealand teams uh, did have a, quite a battle in the round robins uh, in, um, in Portugal and uh, New Zealand was the last team to beat Great Britain um, in Portugal. So these two teams are ready to go at it again and we'll see how things go for this comp. Certainly are. It's uh, going to be a big match. going to be a big match this one both teams had scares in their semi-finals a lot of New Zealand coach uh, Andrew Carr <laughs> was quite clear to say that uh, he wasn't too happy with some of the refereeing decisions in that match and uh, they evened it out a little bit uh, as a referee yourself I don't expect you to comment devil although I know you'd probably want to and uh, we're getting quite an audience built up here one of the things which is quite phenomenal is uh, we're getting over 15,000 people watching us every day. The, the stats are just incredible. Yeah, for sure. The um, the world hockey community has grown over the years, and um, we just continue to grow the sport as best we can. Uh, it's it's uh, this year we're looking at 15 to 16 countries here at the World Championships. It's the largest world uh, competition we've had in the history of our sport. Um, 
16 countries uh, from around the world, uh, almost uh, 80 teams uh, to uh, in attendance here, and uh, all different divisions. We had from uh, U19s, U23s, male and female, again, uh, masters and elites teams. So with all the uh, divisions here and the number of athletes, I think we had around 750 athletes in total. So it's been fantastic, and um, we're, we're really looking forward to rounding out this competition. We've seen some excellent hockey uh, over the past uh, week, and it's all come down to this, uh, this final day with the electrifying atmosphere here and uh, the teams that are uh, about to play in these last couple of final matches. So stay tuned here on 24-7. Uh, uh, we'll be right back with you shortly. We'll take a quick break, and uh, we will get ready for... Uh, the two matches coming up, uh, they'll be doing the uh, marching and the athletes, followed by the anthems for each of the teams, and then we'll get the games underway. So stay tuned here on 24-7 Live. So here's the team list, and you can hear our sexy Adrian. There's more than one Adrian on a microphone at this event. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not the sexy one. Uh, there's the New Zealand at 10. So Leah Chamberlain and Angela Whiteman. Uh, if I had a pen, I would cross these names out. Thank you very much, Nathan. Nathan's here, who did a sterling job on commentary on court two. And it was Kim Mokes and Georgie Lambert who are not playing for... Great Britain. So, we don't seem to have a, a camera operator for this uh, match for some reason. I don't know why.
So welcome, the officials are introduced, Tristan Maynard shaking all the hands. Had uh, some pretty fit girls in these teams, aren't they? They've been spending a bit of time in the gym lately. Oh, for sure. They've uh, definitely been doing their workouts and uh, been packing on the muscle for this big event. Okay. So here we go. The New Zealand team jumping into the water. We're getting ready for the Women's Elite Final. Both teams undefeated. And uh, this should be an absolutely cracking match. This should be a really fascinating match here, and I'm gonna, we're going to do a, a little interesting split here because me and Davo will just clash all the time because we're the same style of commentator. So for the first half, you're going to hear Davo Brambilla talking to the play-by-play, -play, and then myself will take you for the second half, and then we'll toss a coin to see what happens in extra time. But uh, Davo, over to you. All right, thanks, Adrian. So uh, we're, uh, we're going to be getting underway here shortly with uh, Great Britain and New Zealand as Women's League final. Uh, New Zealand seeking a little bit of a revenge after that last World Championships in Portugal in 2011. Uh, they were defeated by Great Britain and uh, uh, Great Britain of course took the gold medal in uh, Portugal. So uh, it's uh, again another matchup between these two uh, excellent teams. Uh, there are no strangers to this rivalry and it's going to be very interesting to see uh, a little bit of a different team uh, with different players. A few new faces to, the, uh, to both teams. Uh, but uh, new coaches as well, and uh, we'll see what kind of strategy and styles come out for this match. So the referees are just getting ready and set underway here. You can hear the electrifying crowd here cheering uh, these two incredible teams on, and I expect we're going to have one heck of an, a matchup here uh, this afternoon. We're just going to... Uh, Take a moment here as uh, they get the countdown clock ready to go. We have about 30 seconds left to uh, get the play started. You can see the supporters there, our fans in the stands as we say, and they are going absolutely crazy. Everybody here from all the nations uh, that have been here at the comp this past week here to cheer on these fantastic athletes. So 10 seconds to go, and here comes the gold medal final for this Women's Elite World Championship of 2013. And there's the opening face-off. New Zealand and Great Britain getting to the puck at the same time, and they break the puck out to the outside wall. Now Kiwis are trying, uh, sorry, it's uh, Great Britain trying to push the puck into the New Zealand end. But New Zealand quickly comes back and pushing hard down the middle on the bottom. It's a quick initial break by New Zealand now coming all the way into Great Britain's zone. They push them back hard to the five meter line, but GB does a great job pushing them back to the outside. Now they come across court, uh, New Zealand on the puck early, holding uh, GB off from getting out of their zone. Now a big flick in from New Zealand. They're trying to charge the goal. Great job by the defender on Great Britain. They swing the puck out to the outside wall again. Both teams down on the bottom. Great Britain coming in strong on the defense from behind. And there's a nice breakout by, by Great Britain. Here they go. You can see them charging up the wall deep into the New Zealand end now. New Zealand trying to cycle back their defenders. They do a good job and pick that puck up. But here comes GB off the wall. They're charging for the goal. New Zealand's trying to get down and stop that charge. But GB continues to press hard. Oh, and a great job by the forwards picking that up and just driving it over to the corner. New Zealand will hold the puck in the corner there. Great Britain also in there. See who's going to give up the puck first. Both teams at it. Here comes GB trying to get up the wall. They push it up the wall, but New Zealand manages to get the puck back and switch possession. So New Zealand's trying once again. And there's the first foul signaled on the play. It's a stick infringement call, and it will go against New Zealand. So Great Britain getting the first attack advantage deep in their zone. And here comes the advantage puck and Great Britain with the big flick in. New Zealand down on the goal. Trying to squeeze it out, but Great Britain comes back. They cycle, there's the back pass. Great job by New Zealand defending, but 
GB is still holding it tight in there. Now they're on the wall. GB trying to pull it off the wall and cycle it back to the middle. New Zealand pressing hard. Here comes a big charge now from GB. They push in on the goal. New Zealand defenders are down. Great Britain trying to squeeze the puck in. Referee was signaling an advantage. And it looks like it's a goal. Wow, so Great Britain with the early strike in the match and they get the first goal with only three minutes into the match. I'm not so sure that New Zealand was expecting that to happen right off the uh, hop. So this is going to turn out to be a very interesting match now. And here we go on the second faceoff after that quick goal by Great Britain. Now New Zealand coming right back down the court. They're down to the five meter line. They're charging in. They're not gonna let GB get that early goal. They're gonna continue to press hard now. Great Britain down defending. New Zealand really pounding on the puck on that wall, just keeping them pushed into their corner. There comes that muscle Adrian was talking about earlier that they've been working out in the gym. You can see that now New Zealand strips the puck. They throw it back in for the big charge. Here they come, two attackers down. GB trying to defend. Here's the push from New Zealand. GB manages to get the flick out. Good job by the forwards back picking. And they continue to drive it in. Here's New Zealand along the back wall. There's the flick. They're charging in on the goal. GB defenders are down in numbers. New Zealand trying to get the puck off the back wall out towards the middle. And it looks like it might have been a goal. Referees are signaling a goal. So New Zealand comes right back and answers after an initial quick goal by Great Britain. Wow, it's going to be a seesaw back and forth match between these teams. Don't you dare step away from your TV sets because this is going to be one heck of a match, folks. And there's the face off after the goal. New Zealand just getting to the puck ahead of Great Britain, but Great Britain makes a great big push through the middle there as they manage to strip it off New Zealand's attackers. And they push him to the outside wall. Referee signals a foul on the play. It's going to be an advantage puck for New Zealand due to a stick infringement. So GB will get pushed back and New Zealand will come out from their five meter line. New Zealand sets up for the advantage puck. We go underwater and here comes the initial flick on the outside wall. They play it safe coming out of their zone. GB down on the bottom, but New Zealand pressing right down that wall. Not letting GB get it. Oh, and there is a call along the wall. I imagine it's going to be a gloving or an obstruction. Yes, it's an obstruction call and it's actually against GB. So New Zealand now right back into GB territory and here they come again off the advantage puck. There's the draw, they try to make the flick in. GB down, trying to make the initial stop. New Zealand trying to get through, the puck squirts out to the middle. GB intercepts that. Oh, New Zealand makes a big back pick and what a push on the goal, they're right on the goal. Can they punch it in? There's a signal on the play at the goal line. No, it is no goal. They signal no goal due to a glove trying to push the puck in the goal on the corner. Well, that was an incredible push right off the side there. They flicked it out on the 45 degree angle right to the center. New Zealand managed to get it over to the goal, but it was defended due to a glove trying to push it in. New Zealand still in control here. GB trying to uh, get New Zealand out of their zone. Here comes New Zealand again. They just continue the pressure. It's still a 1-1 game early in this match. Both teams seesaw battle back and forth. New Zealand still with the pressure cycling in the backs now. Here comes the push. They're down at the three meter line and a referee signals the foul on the play. He's looking for one player, stick infringement. Stick infringement on New Zealand and caution to New Zealand for the stick infringement. GB will take the advantage puck, uh, just shy of center court. And they come out of their end. They get it back out to center court now. GB along the wall, trying to punch it through. New Zealand down heavy on the wall, holding that in there. You can see the, the big kicks coming from both players, trying to get the advantage by pushing through, using their legs to dominate and pu push right through. There they go now on the wall. Looks like a bit of uh, stick infringements on both teams. Referees allow that to continue on. 
GB manages to pick up the puck again off the two, uh, off the uh, New Zealand attackers. Now New Zealand again looking for that flick to the inside. Here it comes, GB reads the play though, intercepts. New Zealand forced to go cross court. Referee sees a foul though, it's an obstruction call against New Zealand and GB will get a breather. So good job by the GB defense. Holding New Zealand at bay, not allowing them to get into their zone. GB takes the puck and they try to come out of their zone. Nice flick through the middle. New Zealand tries to clog that up, but GB continues with the pressure. Here they come now. New Zealand defenders are facing their own goal. Never a good situation as that happens. GB continuing the push down to the goal line. There's the strip of the puck. They look for the flick back to the middle. GB pushing, another flick towards the goal. Everybody trying to get down. There's a signal at the goal. Is it in? No goal. The goal is waved off. So we've had one goal waved off on each side now. It was a glove again, this time by GB on New Zealand's goal. And it's still a 1-1 game here with six minutes left in this first half of the match. So here we go underwater and we're back over on the side wall as it gets pushed there by the GB attackers. New Zealand down, holding it safe on the outside wall about the five meter line and they're holding it tight there. And there is another signal for a foul on the play. They're signaling the New Zealand player number seven, obstruction, oh, and a two minute penalty to New Zealand. That is gonna hurt early in this match. Let's see if New Zealand has the strength to hold off the strong GB attack with a man down. GB gets the first opportunity with a six on five situation. Here comes GB now right off that advantage puck. They push hard right away towards the goal. New Zealand all drops down and they get it pushed back out to the wall and the corner. Now GB strips the puck off. Here comes the push again towards the goal. New Zealand cycles down and they manage to get it back and push it back out to the corner. GB now cycling in, trying to get the puck back over to the middle of the pool. New Zealand maintains possession. Neither team wanting to give up possession here deep in New Zealand's zone. And it looks like it's a bit of a chess match along the wall there, trying to figure out who is gonna be able to grab the puck and make the run for it one way or the other. Now New Zealand attempts to get it back out of the zone, but GB intercepts, here's the flick in. GB's down, New Zealand tries to get down on the back, so GB forward on the other side of the New Zealand defender, not quite able to pick the puck, oh, and a great stop by the New Zealand defender as they punch the puck off the GB stick, uh, and here they're still making a push on the goal, GB trying to get it through, but it's stripped off by the New Zealand attacker, what an amazing save. GB now regains possession, both teams now holding it on the wall, there comes two GB attackers in, New Zealand brings back with their numbers though and hold it on the bottom. Now New Zealand trying to get something going out of their end. Still a six on five situation for GB. GB has not been able to score yet even though they have the man advantage. Great job on the New Zealand defense late in this first half, so four minutes to go. Now here comes a GB push up the middle. Oh, but there's a signal by the referee on the call and lucky for New Zealand, it's a stick infringement call against GB. So that'll give them a bit of a break. And it looks like the New Zealand uh, uh, penalized player is getting ready to get back into the water for the match. So New Zealand comes out with the puck off the face off. There was a big flick. It looks like it might have hit an arm there, dropped down. Play continues on though along the wall. And now the New Zealand player is back on the bottom with all six players back in play again. There we go, and New Zealand's pinching back into the far end of GB now, right back into GB's corner. So now with the full team of six back in the water, New Zealand tries to regain the strength that they had early after they scored that tying goal. GB though, making a great push out of their end. New Zealand facing backwards again, manages to strip the puck, but there's a foul on the play. It's a stick infringement call against GB. 
And New Zealand will get the puck back now. What an incredible match so far. Back and forth we go. And it looks like uh, with that, GB decides they're going to call a timeout with uh, about three minutes left to play in this first half. So both coaches are going to talk here for a moment with their teams and uh, try and uh, do things and uh, see what the strategy is. Well, this has been quite an amazing first half, hasn't it? Um, two, two attacks, serious attacks, both scoring goals. Things we noticed in the semi-finals, Australia had serious attacks and GB weren't able to hold the Australians at bay. New Zealand had that same issue. So, you know, we could see a high scoring game here. They've, you know, New Zealand have been put under some serious pressure there by GB, managed just to hold them off. But, it, you know, it looked GB were very close to getting a second goal there, weren't they? Yeah, both of them, they, they both had their attack opportunities. They both scored one goal and they both had one goal pulled back from each side. So it's a pretty even match. Uh, I'd be very surprised if we see a high scoring match, but I think it's going to be a very close match based on what we've seen in this first half so far. Unless one team figures out a way to run away with this. And after the timeout, we're back at the action with two minutes and uh, 50 seconds left in this first half. Here we go, New Zealand on the attack right away. GB does a good job pushing them out to the corner. New Zealand tries to bring it out of the corner along that back wall, always difficult with defenders down along the wall. But they are still trying to get it down that wall. They're trying to punch through. GB trying to hold off the New Zealand attack. But here comes a call against New Zealand number five. New Zealand number five, that's um, Ellie Hawking. She's now being sent to the box. And a referee has called a timeout. I think they're just gonna uh, reconfirm what the call is. One referee may have been playing the advantage on that. So the referees are gonna discuss on the side. You can see some of our supporters here from uh, Great Britain and New Zealand alike. We're all friends in the stands, at least for the initial part of the match. And the water referee is just discussing with the chief referee about what was seen. And it appeared that one ref was playing an advantage situation. They had seen uh, one foul occur. Another referee was calling uh, a foul for the other direction, I believe. But they have still sent the New Zealand player out, remaining in the box temporarily. We'll see if that penalty holds or if they're going to overturn that and put her back in the water. So the discussions continue. The New Zealand players, uh, the captain uh, or vice captain, has swam over to see if they can find out what's going on uh, near the referees, just trying to get the word. So they've overturned the penalty. So New Zealand does not lose the player. That was a big turn of events. And uh, it, it looks like uh, it's going to be a six on six situation. So we're back at the action once again. And here we go. So GB trying to come out of their zone after that overturned penalty and we're still six on six hockey here. Immediately they go back out to the outside wall. GB making the big push now. New Zealand stripped the puck off them though. Ho, oh, here comes a push through the middle. GB gets the better of it though and does a great job swinging it back to the outside. Now both teams at center court with just under two minutes left in the first period. New Zealand now facing backwards as GB trying to get it but the forward from New Zealand comes in now a great push off the wall by GB trying to drive it and a call by the referee looks like there was a foul on the play a gloving call against uh, GB so New Zealand will get the advantage puck once again one and a half minutes left to go in this first period and here they go New Zealand makes the big flick they got it through the initial uh, forward line of the Brits and here they come, they're trying to do the push on. Great Britain down, all the, the defenders. And it looked like there was a call against uh, New Zealand here. It was a stick infringement and it's a caution against New Zealand. And that'll be a, a, a breath of relief there for GB as they will get the advantage puck coming out of uh, their zone deep in their zone on the five meter line. So GB takes the puck and they start to swim out to the outside. They play it safe and go quickly to the outside wall. We see three GB attackers down, or defenders down, and uh, New Zealand equaling them on the bottom with numbers. Usually it's a battle of numbers between these two teams, and the more players you have on the bottom is usually what results at the end of the match in uh, winning. 
But both teams looking pretty even so far. As I mentioned, it's like a chess game right now between these two teams in the match. So a stick infringement now called against GB with only uh, 17 seconds left right now in this first half. And they set up for one last push here from New Zealand. They got to do it quick. They flick out to the middle. Unfortunately, the uh, New Zealand did not read that play very well and the GB team broke that up. Now the GB making a last ditch attack here before the halftime. Don't quite get it down and it finishes up at center court. So that'll be the first half and uh, what an amazing first half and I'm gonna turn it over to Adrian to continue. Well, Devil's voice is breaking here, but uh, Devil, don't just go away right yet. Um, just give me a thought from a referee's point of view. Tell me, uh, what do you think was going on there? There was a very solid call that you called under the water. Then the refs had a little chit chat. So let, let us into the secret world of refereeing. Um, you know, this dark art of how do they change their decision around? Well, a lot of times, Adrian, what happens is we have uh, different views because of where we are in the pool. One referee had seen a foul and was probably playing an advantage. The second referee saw something happen after the fact. So one referee who, who saw something initially was waiting to make their call. The other referee saw something immediately and called. And so it goes back to the first referee who, who had what we call the advantage. And that's what they were conferring over on the side of the bench about. And uh, that is why the penalty was overturned. It was, it was quite simply uh, the fact that the first referee um, did not feel that... Uh, uh, the penalty was deserved because there, there was a foul that happened before that. And so that's what happened, and uh, the penalty was overturned. Well, there's the New Zealand team having a good talking to with uh, their coach, Andrew Carr. The referees are there. And so the summary of that first half, GB scored very early on with a, with a strong attack. And... Uh, and you see, it's great to have these mobile cameras and really get the sort of faces in the water there as well. The GB girls, they put New Zealand under a fair bit of pressure in that match, in that first half, but New Zealand reacted to it. And uh, first, first half. There you see Louise Otto scoring after 2.36. But Jessica Lauver equalizing for New Zealand with their first attack of the match so very early on in the match there both goals were scored and uh, okay here we go no no penalties as well not a single sin bin the one that was rescinded because of the puck hitting the stick actually going up into the face so not an unsportsman like clock counting down 38 seconds to go so 30 seconds here a GB team, there we go, great atmosphere there, isn't there? The current world champions, Great Britain, up against New Zealand. This is a really big match. It's the second half of the World Championship final, live here from Eger in Hungary. Who's going to take this one? It's very nip and tuck indeed. GB certainly had a bit of pressure in that first half. But the New Zealand girls held up strong and the second half starts. 15 minutes now of brutal underwater hockey action. And the GB girl wasn't laying off there, was she? She absolutely piled through two New Zealand players. The usual midfield scrap. This is what Andrew was talking about. It's just a great big fight sometimes. And a bit of underwater hockey breaks out now and then. Very realistic attitude he had. These teams are incredibly fit. We'll come to the surface as a call. And... There's a, yep, it's going to go GB's way. Stopped by a hand of New Zealand, which isn't allowed in this sport. So, puck to, free puck to GB. What can they can do with this? Move it out to the right, but it's intercepted well there by New Zealand. That was the number six for New Zealand, Jessica Lauva, who was the goal scorer. That caught GB on the hop, and New Zealand are starting to swamp the play a little bit here. Putting in a big move on the GB team, but the GB girls have got down and responded. New Zealand moving it across to the centre. There's an overlap on the right if the puck can be flicked there, but it's intercepted by GB. New Zealand have got plenty of players down on the floor at the moment. They're putting in a big move on this in this final, and GB go to the corner. Sophia Tapper there moves it up the right-hand side. New Zealand swamp in as well from the top, but GB are strong, and they're moving it very strongly forward. There's a break on here for GB. 
and it's the goalkeeper for New Zealand, the, the last the fullback who just pulls up short there. Very strong swimming move from GB. Back to our centre camera. New Zealand coming in on the on the move now. It's flicked forward, but defended by GB. Very brave manoeuvre there with two or three New Zealand athletes around you. New Zealand have got a two and one on the floor. New Zealand pushing down the wall, pushing hard. Big scrap here. But the puck's been pulled out and we're going to be called above surface. And that's going, it's been stopped by a hand of New Zealand and it will be a free to Great Britain. That was a tremendous response from New Zealand there. GB made a flowing move from the back into midfield and then New Zealand did the same back. Great atmosphere here. Colombians are in party mood. They've won a, they've won a few matches today as well. It's always nice to see the Colombians partying. We're going to get a call here, and it's the it's the free hand. Zoe Firth goes into the sin bin for a bit of an elbow or a bit of something with the free hand that wasn't permitted, and GB will have another power play. And in the past, they've really done well with the power plays. In front of a New Zealand goal, moved out towards the wall though. New Zealand will be comfortable leaving that there. Zoe Firth's got one minute. New Zealand captain. In fact, that's the, I think that's the first penalty of the match, isn't it? And uh, New Zealand just moving it up that side wall. But moving it up fairly quickly here. Some of the GB girls having to sprint on the surface. That was a fast move from New Zealand up the side wall. This is a good way to uh, count down the penalty. But Great Britain managed to get the, get the puck. Moving it down towards his open side. That's a lovely pass inside. GB are there in numbers, looking for the flick through, but it didn't happen, and GB managed to defend that. Well, that's not a bad way to handle a short-handed situation, but here's a move from GB up the side wall. There's support there from the number six, Helen Wallace. GB moving in on the New Zealand goal. They've got the overlap. New Zealand have got bodies on the floor, and they managed to hold that one off well. And it's number four, Georgina Child for New Zealand, who comes away with a puck. Passes it inside to Claire George. Louise Otto there, number two for GB, trying to get on in the action, hopefully for a spill. And GB happy to just put it in the open side. There's two news oh, there's three New Zealanders down. Two go up for breath. Sabina Corrente there. Stuck in that corner. New Zealand get the puck now and move it up the side wall. And there's an overlap in the middle, mistake by GB there. There was a miscalculation, they might have to pay for it. Oh, the puck has been flicked out. We're going to see there's a call in the water. And it's going to go GB's way, well. A legal stoppage of the puck there from uh, New Zealand. But GB were caught out there, there was a mistake in defence. You saw that New Zealand girl looked up, couldn't believe she, she had the goal in sight and uh, GB nearly paid for that mistake. Great Britain moving up the uh, open side again, they seem to like moving down the right hand side, Helen Wallace there uh, battling away, but New Zealand have been very strong in midfield in the second half, and they've managed to cut off GB on every opportunity. They're doing it again, they're getting numbers down. It's a real battle in that midfield, and New Zealand currently dominating this second half. Again, if GB have to defend, and they'll defend in the corner happily. This time they'll have to not try and make the mistake they made before rotate and we're going to get called to the surface and another one that goes the GB way illegal stop there thank you well this half's flying by only nine minutes to go a couple of substitutions taking place from New Zealand there's a lot of work going in on both sides here. Surely they must tire. They've had very tough semi-finals. Both coaches said that the teams had trained hard enough. They shouldn't have any trouble with one a day. And there's an inside pass here for New Zealand if it was on. But it was well blocked there by GB. Good defence. 
I think that was Louise Otto in there. She, st she stayed in the water for an extra length of time as well, just to cover that. New Zealand have a chance. It's flicked inside. Here's an, oh, it's a brilliant interception by GB. That was nearly an, an open goal for New Zealand. And it was down to the last GB defender to stop that. They'll have a little battle on the sidelines. It's certainly been all New Zealand this second half. GB moving along the sideline. Middle camera, please. Moving it down the open side. A real, real scrap down this open side here. And again, New Zealand, it's a, it's a big black wall that GB are bouncing against on the halfway line. They just can't seem to be able to get into the New Zealand half. Here's a strong move though from GB. Helen Wallace pushing towards the goal. Uh, GB for the first time seriously are making a move on New Zealand now. There's Katie Firth, number five for GB. And Rachel Bell making a steals the puck and gets it into the corner. Louise Otto there fighting in the corner with Kathleen White of New Zealand. Helen Wallace just waiting for the puck to come out. Well, New Zealand have had their opportunity in the GB third. Now, and we're going to get a call here. And number three, holding on to the wall. Thank you very much. I've not seen that symbol very often. <laughs> so holding on to the wall, not allowed. And GB are going to have a free here and are going to move in on the goal. Flick forward. All the bodies are down. There's nobody on the surface. GB have actually got two on the surface coming in for a second wave. Here's a chance for GB now. All the New Zealanders have gone up. Where the pucks in front of goal. Here's a chance for GB. They flicked it in from long distance. It's Oh, it's not given. It's not given. Whoa. That is a big call. That is a big call. An illegal use of a free arm given there. Well... Now where was that where was that call coming from? That's it. Because that looked like a free goal from long range. Sophia Tapper's gonna get two minutes as well. So that must have been by the side wall where, where the puck was put in. That uh, there was a late call on that. And a real bit of luck there for New Zealand. Things going her, uh, going their way at the moment. And now they have the power play and they're gonna push down that side wall. Beautiful pictures. Lovely to see the pool's kept a little bit cleaner here. New Zealand looking for the puck to pop out. They've got support there. They've got the power play. A minute and 26 seconds. Turning over nicely. Playing the rotation. GB will just be happy to leave this in there. We saw uh, extra time is not a problem to these athletes, of course. New Zealand looking to pass the puck inside. A little bit of movement on the puck. But it's gone back to the wall again. Sophia Tapper's gone one minute. We've got an advantage call in the water. And which way is this going to go? Going against New Zealand. And we've got a one minute in the sin bin for New Zealand players. So we're going to be five aside for a little while. It's been a pretty clean game, actually. No warnings given so far. And we're, we're just going to have a... Yeah, the officials just saying who who actually did that. It was number four for New Zealand, Georgia Child, who's going to take the punishment. Sometimes the officials uh, can't see the numbers uh, under the water, so they ask for a bit of honesty from the team, and the team decide to send their weakest player in. <laughs> I wouldn't say that Georgia Child is the weakest player, of course. Hope you're enjoying this down under. I think it's three or four in the morning down there. And uh, hi to the Tower Hotel in Melbourne. Hope uh, Mr. Henderson and his uh, crew are having great fun down there. Probably under the table by now if you've been drinking this late. We're going to have another call here. Legal stoppage of the puck. And an, and an equal call there. So, okay, penalty either way. We're going to have an equal puck. Under the water. It goes. Four and a half minutes left. It's been pretty frenetic there. but And here's a move from GB trying to push it down the wall into the corner. Now GB have a power play for about 20 seconds. Georgia Child still in the chair. What can GB do with his power play? Looking to flick this puck out. Get some action into the middle of the play. And New Zealand moving it up the wall well. 
And GB are still in there. This puck, they're just looking for, it's almost like a pinball at times of this puck, just hoping that it pops out on your side. We're back to level now. Georgia Child is back in the water and it's six, a, six aside. Three minutes 50 to go. GB over singing the, the England theme. I think uh, Nathan could probably answer this, but it's mainly in it. Oh, GB are coming in here. Oh, it, it looks like it's a goal. It's a goal given. A goal is given to Great Britain. That was a complete shock of a goal. Katie Firth has scored the goal for Great Britain. The puck was on the wall and G New Zealand looked in total control of that situation. But it was just like I said earlier, almost like a pinball machine. Sometimes that puck is going to pop out and it did so and the GB Katie Firth was waiting for it in the middle. And Great Britain have taken a 2-1 lead here with 3 minutes 26 to go. Um, Nathan, I was going to ask you a question. I know you're not on mic, but, well, you can put yourself on mic. There's the, uh, there's the New Zealand team. The Great Britain team, are they mainly English-based players? Are there any Scots or Welsh in this team? Oh, you bet. There's a, there's a whole load of uh, Scots in there. Um, the uh, Orkney contingent, we have uh, Helen Wallace and uh, Katie, Katie Firth, who uh, just came in there with that school, both from, uh, from there. Um, from Coimbra a couple of years ago, we even had uh, more. We've got uh, Mags Goff. Yeah. Also one of the Scottish contingents. So it's a, a real a real broad mix from the UK there. Great stuff. So it truly is great. But somebody was saying to me it's mainly England, isn't it? But uh, I, I couldn't answer that question. Hey, you want to be careful with that, Adrian. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Well, here we go. Three minutes, 25 to go. And Great Britain have taken the lead. And now, can they defend it? Great Britain coming in with a very strong... They've been very good with their uh, face-offs. They've always seemed to have won them with strong swimming and the puck's come through the centre. Here's a chance for Great Britain to add a third. Oh, and the puck's been knocked out to the wall. Great defence from New Zealand. It's do or die time for New Zealand. Another goal for Great Britain and the world title is theirs. They're pushing hard up the left-hand side still. That was tremendous defence from New Zealand. They really had to get on the line there. Great Britain was looking for the, for the almost the alley 1-2 there, weren't they? One goal straight after another would have just laid New Zealand out for the count. In the corner... And we're going to get a call. Uh, equal puck, yeah, gloving, stop the puck. And it's going to be an equal puck. But it's importantly for Great Britain, it's in the New Zealand corner. New Zealand are going to have to try and get this puck up there quickly. There's only two minutes, and it's a counting clock, of course. Until we get to two minutes, that clock keeps going. Equal puck, up on the far side. Hope you're loving those pictures here in HD on YouTube and uh, watching all the replays. Remember to keep an eye on our Facebook page because we're going to put lots more action up in HD over the next few weeks. So 247.tv uh, on Facebook. Make sure you like us. Here we go with two minutes to go. Great Britain tying this puck up in the corner. I think we know what tactics they're doing here. A la Francais. The uh, referee's just pointing at one of the New Zealand players here, I believe. Somebody's coming out. Oh, I think it could be could be one of the GB. We're just waiting to see who's going to actually come into the water. Somebody's getting one minute, and it's one of the New Zealand players. And well, with 1:36 to go, so one of the New Zealand. It's a power play for Great Britain. Back under the water. Here we go. 1:53 left. The uh, clock on our screen is actually wrong at the moment. It's 1.43, so I'm sure they'll correct that in time. And Quaranti, Sabrina Quaranti, uh, just gets one minute in there, so don't worry that it shows 1.06. That's just our scoreboard people trying to correct the main clock, which is affecting her time as well, so don't worry about that. She's only got about 50 seconds to go, and she'll be back in the water. We've got an equalising uh, sin bin here for GB, and... Uh, that's going to make it a five-a-side out there. Didn't ca didn't see what that foul was. Another gloving offence, and they decided uh, we're going to get you uh, in the sim bin for that. So New Zealand moving up the wall. Sophie Kern there getting one minute. Quaranti is going to be uh, going to be out shortly. And New Zealand moving it strongly up the wall, looking to bring it in the corner. Coming down to to a minute to go. GB need to defend this strongly. New Zealand have to score to take us into extra time. 
GB rotating around. Oh, the, the puck's moving up the wall towards the goal. There's a move here from New Zealand. GB of putting all action in to keep the puck away. Oh, the puck looks as if it might be coming even closer. It's on the edge of the goal. And it's been flicked out to the corner again. One of the GB athletes just got a stick on it. Flicked it, a strong flick into the corner. And New Zealand moving it in again. New Zealand pushing hard. Right on the edge. This could be a goal. Yes, I think the referees are going to give it. Yes, it's a goal for New Zealand. The goal is given with 30 seconds to go. It's an equalising goal for New Zealand. What a move from the corner. They put in the power and the muscle and Jessica Lauva scores her second goal of the match. What a tremendous move from New Zealand. It was their last move of the match. We're going to have extra time here. And GB don't even bother to contest this face-off. The time will count down. It's extra time in the Women's World Championship final. Oh, well, it's moments like this that, you know, you really love finals and devil. New Zealand had to score with that move. They knew that that was it. And what guts they showed to score the goal there. I've seen this so many times before, Adrian, in World Championships. Some of the best teams in the world, when they get down, they just get focused. And that's exactly what happened with New Zealand. They, they were down a penalty situation. They knew it was do or die. They pushed hard. They got it all the way down the court, got their player back in, and they managed to pop in that goal. So with that, I mean, they tied it up late in the game. It's 2-2 now, and it's anybody's match. We're going to go to two five-minute periods of uh, overtime. And if it's still tied, we're going to the ever exciting and electrifying sudden death well the kiwi flag is flying out there and two right they uh, they really had to rise to the moment and they did so absolutely brilliant as uh, some of the kiwi teams the kiwis have had a fantastic tournament here they've won three out of four finals two more finals to come they only entered six teams in the competition they've all made finals um i'd, I'd like to know what they're drinking down there. <laughs> there's something in the water or something They've had an extremely good competition here. And uh, it could be four out of five now. And the GB team, just look at them, body language. Look at it. They're slumped shoulders. There's one of the girls just patting on the back saying, come on, fire it up. The GB are on a bit of a low now, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate when something like that so late in the game happens. Just when you think you have it and all of a sudden the team swings the play around and brings it all the way back. It is a little bit crushing initially, but again, like I said, some of the best teams in the world, they get refocused, and they're going to come back hard out of this half. Both teams are going to try and do their best to uh, take this match on and win it. It's two five-minute periods, like I said, and it's it's anybody's game. It's going to be an incredible finish, whichever way it goes. Uh, we're looking for uh, some big plays, uh, probably from uh, the GB team, probably from Sophia Tapper uh, as one of the possibilities. Uh, also looking for uh, maybe uh, the New Zealand captain to punch through for her team. So we'll see how things come out in the second half. We've got about uh, 40 seconds left to go in the uh, timeout before the extra time starts. Well, here's the GB girls. Nice to, <laughs> nice to see Sophia Tapper, the captain number three, giving us a little wave. Here we go. This is extra time, and Darrell will take you through the first half. All right, so both teams are just getting ready, uh, lined up on the wall, about 15 seconds. These teams are ready to go. They are pumped up, and they want this match. It's going to be interesting to see who wants it more, though, in this uh, extra time half. It's uh, Like I said, it's anybody's game, and with two five-minute periods, it's going to be uh, a tough slug for both of these teams. So here we go off the face off in the first extra time of five minutes. And GB gets to the puck, tries to punch through right away. They make a good hard check on the Kiwis and they punch through. New Zealand though regaining the puck and they go to the outside wall right away just trying to hold off the initial GB attack. Now New Zealand trying to bring it back out to center court and they do but GB does a great job stopping that and driving it right back down the wall. Look at the kick going down that wall. They just don't stop kicking. That's what they kept the momentum up and they keep driving it down there. Now a little bit of ticky tack on the wall with uh, both teams doing the stick work. 
but GB manages to hold it. Now, because of the cycle, New Zealand gets an initial flick out and they start to drive it out of their end. There goes number nine on uh, New Zealand, Claire George trying to work it up the wall. Unfortunately, there is a call on the play though. And a referee's looking for uh, a penalty situation here. It's against the Kiwis. It was a stick infringement. And it looks like that was uh, number five going out. And that's gonna be uh, Ellie Hawking. So here we go, a penalty situation. GB with the extra body in this first overtime period. Can they capitalize on it with the man down? New Zealand gets the draw and does a quick break right out to the far wall and gets it out past center court. GB intercepts though and answers right back, comes back down the court. Now both teams cycling on the bottom. Here comes the GB push. They're coming in in number strong. New Zealand, great job on the defense though and they get it back out to the corner to safety. Now we're gonna see uh, GB just hang back a little bit and let New Zealand get it out of the corner so they can try and jump on him and punch it right back in through the middle. Here they go, New Zealand trying to just hold them to the outside wall and run down the penalty. Now New Zealand gets it back up to center court. There's a good push by the New Zealand late in this, uh, this penalty situation here. Three minutes left to play in the first overtime period. Both teams at center court. Here's a beautiful flick out by the GB defenders out to center court. But a great job by New Zealand shutting that one down before they can make it any further. Now here's a big push by GB. They beat the New Zealand defender. Here comes two attackers, two on one. New Zealand down, ho! Oh, what an incredible play by the defender. I can't believe they stopped that. It was a two on one situation. Somehow managed to come up with a puck. And so New Zealand regains possession, push it out to the outside wall. GB still hard on the press, here they come again. Here's the flick through, can they get the better of it? They're trying to get it through, New Zealand comes down, they sweep the puck out again to the outside. An incredible job by the forwards coming into back check and just pulling that puck out and getting it out to safety again. New Zealand's players still in the box with two minutes left to play in this first overtime period. Nobody's giving it up early. They're gonna continue to battle along that outside wall. New Zealand player just getting ready to come back in. And it's a stick infringement call against Great Britain. So New Zealand gets a very lucky break here coming out of their deep end zone. And the player is gonna be right back in here. So they're gonna have six on six hockey again. And we'll see if New Zealand will be recharged after defending that penalty for two minutes in overtime. So both teams now back at center court on the far wall. GB trying to get it done, but they can't. New Zealand now making a push down that wall into GB zone. Here they come up the middle. GB shuts that down though before New Zealand can get any further. Now comes back the other way. Oh, there's a big push by New Zealand again. They went for the flick to the far side, GB, but New Zealand intercepted and came right back. Three attackers down on New Zealand. GB cycling in behind now. Good job by both teams. Oh, there's a big push come from GB along the wall. New Zealand answers back and shuts it down. Both teams back and forth here. What an incredible battle along the wall. And there's a little bit of a, a, a hold on the wall by uh, the Great Britain defender had one arm locked on the wall. And here we go again. New Zealand comes through again. They make the flick through. GB shuts them out to the outside though with uh, 30 seconds left to go in this first overtime period. GB knows the time clock is running down. They're just trying to hold it out to the outside wall and corner now. They wanna run down this first half if they can while they're deep in their zone. Now GB tries to come off the wall. New Zealand gets back in while they're still deep in there. Here comes one last big push. GB quickly grabs that puck and just will hold it tight on the wall there, not let New Zealand jump it out. And GB still holding it there. New Zealand trying to make one last push. Not enough time in that first extra time. And that'll be the first half, first period. So a one minute break. They'll switch ends and quickly right back at it. What a first half. What a first half that was. That was only five minutes of play. And while New Zealand had two two on ones against them, and there was just one of the New Zealand athletes who, who just made a most amazing stop, put it out to the wall. Well, 
incredible defending from New Zealand. They absolutely put it all in. GB put a lot of pressure on. They had a power play in there. They had a two-minute power play. And now it's down to the second five minutes. Only a one-minute break in between. They've got to get off quickly, the New Zealand team. You couldn't ask for a better final, Adrian. And this is the go. way. Yeah, absolutely. This is... Well, if this, you know, if you want to say what is underwater hockey all about, this is it. Two top teams, incredibly strong athletes on each side. And already we've got this little midfield battle going on. GB just defending a little bit here. New Zealand starting to push. There's Katie Furfair. And Kathleen White for New Zealand doing a sterling job there in the centre of all. In fact, she's done very well. She took on two GB players and won that. Pass has gone inside. New Zealand have got people in attack here. They've got the extra man. Can they make it count? New Zealand crowd are getting really behind their team. Puck's flown out, though. And there's a second wave, but it's defended beautifully. That's superb defending. That was uh, Mags Goff there doing a great job for Great Britain. Helen Wallace now holding it in the corner. But uh, that was a great opportunity for New Zealand, and it was it's GB's turn to defend. That's cut out by New Zealand. Here's a chance. Here's a big chance for New Zealand. It's flicked in. Referee's in the way, but it's cut, put out into the corner again, and GB strongly holding that one. New Zealand try and come in on a different angle. Put it round the outside. GB are there though. There's obviously a little tactic here. I think Andrew may have been fibbing a little bit. They've, uh, they've obviously seen GB and they're trying to work it down the wall and along the inside. They've scored that way. Here's a what? Open goal. Must be a goal for New Zealand, surely. It looks like it's going to be a goal. It's a goal is given. New Zealand lead three to two. And a mistake in the GB defence somewhere there. There was a mismatch somewhere. And Adrian, as I mentioned, I believe that was the skipper coming in to score that goal from New Zealand. Uh, we expected big things from her, Zoe Firth. I believe she came in and got that last goal. Well, what an incredible, incredible moment that was. What an amazing performance here from New Zealand. They had the extra man. I think GB made an error in defence somewhere. There was a mismatch happened. Suddenly there were two New Zealanders on one GB right in front of goal. And New Zealand coming in on the attack again. They could kill it off here. One of the officials are given a foul and it's gone GB's way. Unsportsmanlike. And it's going to be an unsportsmanship. We've got two minutes. There's going to be two minutes left on the clock. The clock's counting down. It will stop at two minutes. And GB will have a power play for the rest of this match. Here we go. The clock's going. GB already on the attack. Zoe Firth is off now for the rest of this match. Unless we go to sudden death. Come on, Robert. Let's go. We're on the end camera. And good movement here by New Zealand. Pushing it away. But GB have solid to it. GB have got the extra man. There's one and a half minutes left for the current world champions to try and hold on to their title. Well, they're up against that side wall here. One minute 15. New Zealand very happy to tie it up. Great Britain have a little break on down the line, into the corner. Well, what drama we've got here, but GB have to look and score here. They have to make this into a goal. This is exactly the same situation we had at the end of the second half with New Zealand. And GB have got an opportunity. The puck's flown out. They've, New Zealand are all on the bottom at the moment defending that. And they defended that well, and we've got a call at the surface. No, we haven't. We're still going. It's just everybody having a breathe at the same time. And New Zealand take the opportunity to move the puck up the wall. Uh, possibly a mistake there from GB, and it's 37 seconds left to go. 
Still a power play to the end of the match. GB take the puck and move it inside. They're looking for the moves inside, but uh, New Zealand are strong to it. New Zealand holding that well. Two incredibly strong teams. We've had a great battle here. Now GB moving towards the New Zealand goal. They've got an extra man inside, but they can't find him. It's brilliantly defended by New Zealand. 15 seconds to go. It's all or nothing for the GB and New Zealand teams now. The puck's in front of goal. GB have got to move on. They're pushing hard. They're pushing hard. It, when the puck's been moved to the wall. The counter's going. And New Zealand are world champions. New Zealand have won the match. Well, Adrian, that was one of the most incredible matches I've seen in a long time here at these World Championships. New Zealand wanted retribution after 2011 where GB took the title from them and were the reigning champions coming into this. And now they're back on top once again. That is absolutely incredible. Well, Great Britain put in a really powerful display there. That match could have gone either way, but it's New Zealand who showed true class at the end of the match. It was them that came in around the edge. They scored that goal at the end of the second period where they had to score. There was no other option. And then New Zealand scored the winner and Great Britain, who pushed hard, just couldn't find. Well, Daryl, look at this. It's a great emotions here, these New Zealand girls. This win means a lot to them. Great pictures here from uh, Andy on our mobile camera. You can see the disappointments on the British faces. What a match. Uh, it was an incredible match. And, you know, the, these girls are just let it hang all out on the line. I mean, these girls have been training for two years solid to be the best in the world. And you know what? It could have gone either way. These two teams are the best in the world, without a doubt. They've been to so many world championships before at this level, and we've seen them in these finals. And, and my hat's off to both of them. It was just fantastic to see this incredible match. Well, there we see, uh, we're just going to uh, go to our overhead cameras here for a bit. You'll see the players are just going over, shaking hands uh, with the referees and thanking them uh, once again for um, the match and uh, the refereeing. It looked like there was some, uh, some really good uh, refereeing, some excellent calls uh, going both ways against both teams. Uh, it was pretty evenly matched. Uh, I'm sure we're going to uh, take a look and see... Uh, uh, at some point, uh, the penalties list, uh, uh, if we can get those up on the screen here shortly. Um, but the, uh, there we go. If we see that, uh, the penalty situation there, we'll see that Great Britain had a couple. And, uh, uh, sorry, uh, those are the goals scored there. So, again, two goals by Great Britain, three for uh, New Zealand, taking the championship. Not a lot of penalties in the game, um, but that definitely did make a difference. Uh, throughout the match and there we see it New Zealand actually took a lot more penalties there um, you can see uh, they took uh, almost seven minutes in penalties there uh, three minutes for uh, Great Britain but yet New Zealand the stronger of the two teams managed to have a stronger solid defense overall and when it counted they came back and put in that goal uh, to punch it in and uh, tie up the match and then of course take it into overtime and win in the final stages of this match so uh, it was an incredible last uh, last push push by uh, Great Britain however they uh, continued when uh, New Zealand had that last penalty for the last two minutes of stop time they were really pushing hard on New Zealand drove them all the way down to that corner you saw them cycling in and continuously trying to uh, uh, get that puck out to the middle but New Zealand kept shutting them down and uh, managed to continue to work that puck out to the corner and they just kept cycling that and uh, Great Britain could not penetrate and make that last goal uh, they they tried so hard but uh, you know what again these two teams are some of the best in the world and uh, they will be back again 
uh, in three years time uh, when we go to our next world championships and I expect great things from both these teams, uh, the coaches, the captains, uh, and the entire support staff from both of them uh, who have worked hard to get these, uh, uh, these two fine ladies teams here to the championships at this level. So again, it's been a, a great matchup. We're gonna have the uh, men's elite gold final coming up here shortly. Thanks, uh, we're just waiting for our uh, roaming reporter here, okay, Adrian Dattersby. As as and uh, he's just uh, come up with the captain, I believe it is Zoe Firth. So we're gonna hand it over to Adrian now and uh, we'll go live with him with the interviews with the captain. Well, with me, I've got uh, Zoe Firth, and uh, Zoe, you must be absolutely thrilled. You've got the world title back. Yeah, absolutely stoked. I've never had it before, so it's absolutely brilliant. I'm so happy. Uh, tell us about the match, and tell us about the second goal as well. You know, when you were 2-1 down, you knew you had to score with that move, and how incredible it was that the girls managed to produce a goal. Yeah, everyone was on the bottom, and it was just amazing. Huge credit to the GB girls. It was a really good game. They should feel proud of how they played, and I'm just so stoked with my girls. Tell us of your thoughts about the match generally. It looked like a pretty physical encounter down there. There's a lot of very strong girls down there, isn't there? Um, yep, strong and fast, um, but it was quite clean and open, which is what we like. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was yeah. great. Yeah. And New Zealand in particular. This is, you've won four out of five. You've got the men to come. Yep. It's, you're doing pretty well this tournament. We are. All six New Zealand teams in the finals. It's absolutely brilliant. Yep, we put a lot of work in back home. And thanks to huge thanks to all the supporters back home. You guys are amazing. And yeah, we love it. It's pretty late back home, but I know there's a big New Zealand contingent watching us. You know, the, the people on Skype and the chat and everything. Um, just where does this take you now for the future? Because I'm looking around and you all seem pretty young, actually. Uh, yep, uh, average age is 25. We've got two girls on the team who are 19. So, yep, we've got an awesome base, an awesome base of juniors coming up. It's actually a huge tips. thanks to Tristan Reynard, who's done a lot of work back home, set up our schools league, and, yep, a lot of credit goes to him for this win, too. Great stuff. Well, thanks for coming and talking to us, Zoe, and uh, you might have a little tipple tonight, maybe, to celebrate. I'll see you at the party later. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks. Well, Zoe walks off into the distance, and uh, as you can see, there's a, the British girls have. Uh, well, thanks again, Adrian, for that interview with uh, New Zealand's team captain uh, Zoe Firth. Uh, again, uh, talking about uh, the win that they just uh, had over that fine Great Britain team.